Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be looking at restoring and repairing these two vintage mask Condor bikes and Brad Turner. Now often if you're collecting the, these mask toys the Condor bike is one that always has a key part missing and that is the windscreen. In fact you can see both of these vehicles here have those windscreen missing so what I'm going to do is work out a way of making those from scratch. You can also see that both of these uh, Brad Turners have seen better days. They are very heavily played with lots of paint wear on them so we're going to be uh, retouching all of that and making him look as good as new. And I think also what we need to do is make some custom stickers for the Condor because it really is sort of quite underdone as far as uh, stickers go. It comes with three stickers and they're a little bit underwhelming so I think we can certainly do something better with those. We also need to do some uh, paint repairs on these vehicles and then I'm also going to be showing you a way of displaying these with a replacement box which you can just about see in the background there. I will be showing more on that later in the video but the first thing we need to do is work out how to make some replacement windscreen. So let's get on with that. So here we have two different Condor bikes. I picked both of these up off eBay. This one's actually not in too bad condition. You can see the sticker is reasonable there on the front. And actually if I put this uh, sort of piece up you can see the stickers on the side aren't looking too bad at all. The other one came with no stickers at all so it's a little bit bare but both of them are missing this little windscreen here and it seems actually that if you look for uh, these to buy certainly on eBay the ones with the windscreens go for quite a lot of money. These without the windscreens you can get for under £10. I think I paid nine pounds for that one. I think I paid eight pounds for that one. So you can see they're actually quite cheap. But what we're going to do today is uh, make a windscreen for this and it should be a fairly straightforward thing to do. I've got some reference photos that I've taken from another eBay auction. Someone have very kindly sort of taken lots of shots of the vehicle. So that gives me a really good idea of the shape that we need to create. I've also got here a vampire which has a fairly similar looking windscreen on it. So I can use that as a sort of a bit of a guide as to how smooth these things need to be and how the sort of the edges are finished. So I'm going to use that as my guide as well. But the photos will be the uh, main thing that I need to sort of work from. So so the first thing I do is actually make a cardboard version of the rough shapes. I've got the pieces here so you can see these are sort of cardboard pieces that I've cut out just of some cheap cardboard. Uh, I sort of roughly work out the shape that I'm going to be able to make using a one millimeter styrene sheet and doing it in cardboard is the cheaper way of doing it because the styrene sheet costs a few pounds. Cardboard is essentially free so I sort of cut all these pieces out and then glue them roughly together to make a sort of shape that I'm happy with and once that sort of looks half decent I then get take these and start working in styrene sheets. So from this rough cardboard version that you see here in pieces I took it all apart again and then cut those pieces out of one millimeter styrene sheet and was able to make this. So this is my very sort of first prototype version of the cockpit immediately I'd made it I can see it's not quite right but it still gives me a good understanding of how I'm going to be able to construct this and sort of how it works. So let's try that on the, the uh, bike and you can see it sort of fits okay. It's a little bit too high and a little bit too big and a little bit too long. Everything about it is not quite right but it sort of gives me a good starting point to how to get the sort of final version done. So that's prototype number one. Obviously it's not right so I took that off and I sort of remade the uh, cardboard pieces and sort of redesigned them. And then I made a second version which is this one here and this is the one I'm very happy with. So you can see that that now slots on the bike. It's got a nice sort of angle at the front which matches the front of the bike and I think overall it's really quite convincing as a sort of windscreen goes. It's obviously not see-through but uh, we'll worry about that later. So what we're going to do now is let's make one of these. I've already made a pattern uh, so uh, you'll be able to download that from toyploy.com for free. So if you want to uh, follow along go and grab that and we'll get making this a little replacement windscreen. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. So this is the file that I made that you can uh, get from toyploy.com. I've just printed this out onto some normal printer paper at 100% scale. So this is exactly the right size to fit on the bike. You can see it's actually quite small and it consists of five pieces that need to be cut out. There are a couple of other pieces that we'll need to cut out later, but these will construct the main part of the windscreen. What I have here is some uh, one millimeter black styrene sheet. You can pick this up off eBay or most model shops will sort of stock this sort of thing. It's fairly cheap to get and it's very easy 
to work with, which is why we're going to be using this today. All I've done is I've cut off a small piece of that. You can see one side is really super shiny and the other side is a sort of dull matte colour. It doesn't actually matter which side you sort of use and have pointing outwards because we're going to be adding a sort of spray coat to the end of this so you can use either side that you want. What I've got to do with this though is then put the pattern on it and cut it out. And the easiest way to do that is actually just get some Pritt stick and glue this pattern on there. Pritt stick is a water based uh, glue so you can easily wash it off once uh, you've sort of it's set and everything is stuck in place. So I will just stick the pattern on, we'll cut it out and then once it's all cut out I can drop these pieces in some water and the stuck on uh, bits of paper will just drop off and we'll have some nice clean pieces of uh, neatly cut bits of styrene. So I'm just going to stick that on there and then we can get cut in. I've shown you how to use this stuff multiple times in various videos. I'm not going to go over it particularly now. Basically you will need a ruler and a knife and just sort of carefully score around the edges. Once you've scored it you can sort of flex the plastic and it will snap neatly along the lines. You have to go a little bit sort of neater on these slightly curved pieces and you may need some plastic nippers. They are very useful if you want to do these sort of outside curved pieces. But really it's just a case of going slowly and doing this as neat as you possibly can because you want these pieces exactly to match this pattern. Otherwise when we put them together it won't look like the windscreen there. And there we go, after only a few minutes we have the five pieces cut out. And do make sure to keep all the little scrap pieces that you cut off because we can make use of these for some of the other pieces that we need to make uh, later on. If the uh, pieces that you've cut out have little rough edges then I would suggest to just use a file or something just to uh, carefully sort of take those off. You don't need to be particularly neat with this at this stage because by the time this is all stuck together we'll then start fine tuning it and rounding all the edges. But if there's anything really obvious I would suggest taking those off just to make it as smooth as it can be. Now we need to do uh, the next stage which is we need to put a slight bend into this front panel. So uh, let's do that. This panel needs to match the curve that's on this piece here. So you can see at the moment it sits flat. What we've got to do is add a slight curve at this end. So the wider end of the triangle needs to be slightly curved. You can warm this up in just boiled water and sort of gently sort of bend it and it will take that shape. Or if you're being lazy, which is what I'm doing now, I've just got a piece of paper here that I'm going to put uh, around this uh, piece of uh, styrene just so that I don't put any marks in it. And I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to very gently sort of tease that shape into it. You can sort of twist it 
Um, and if you do this sort of slowly and gentle enough, uh, you can actually get that shape put in quite easily. Uh, with the hot water is probably slightly sort of easier, but that means I've got to go downstairs and boil the kettle. So I'm just sort of doing this the lazy way and I will get the same result if I go slow enough and sort of gentle enough. There you go, that's almost right. You can see there's just a bit of a curve in there. I will sort of hold it up to the other piece just to make sure I get it about right. Still needs a little bit more curve to it. But you can see it's fairly straightforward to do. Just a bit of paper just to uh, protect the uh, plastic because uh, my uh, pliers here, you can see have ridges in them and I'll end up with little ridges in the uh, styrene sheet if I uh, don't put the paper in the way. That looks pretty good that side we'll check the other side as well just about maybe a final sort of few uh, little bends on that one but i think that will do now we have all the pieces ready we can go ahead and stick this together i'm going to be using some plastic weld this is ema model supplies plastic weld there are different brands this just happens to be the one that i like to use it's very quick uh, to work with styrene and plastic weld you literally brush it on hold the sort of pieces together and then brush a little bit more on, and it fuses and bonds the surfaces together with this piece uh, we need to add a slight angle to it so you want this piece here sort of slightly tapered outwards Basically this tiny little piece at the front, you've got to sort of match the angle of that when you uh, put the pieces together. And if you uh, manage that, then everything should fit quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of uh, sort of old blue tack here or a sticky tack. And I'm going to hold the edge in there like that. That way I can hold this piece here and put the plastic weld on the edge. We'll let that sort of set a little bit. We'll do the same to the other side. Then we'll put the front piece on and then this final little piece here goes across the top. And we'll let everything then sort of set we'll put a liberal amount of plastic weld on just to make it bond really nicely once that's all set we can sand it down and start shaping it finally but uh, let's get these first few pieces put together so i open the plastic weld get some on the brush and we can sort of put it brush it down the edges just to get these sort of uh, starting to get a little bit tacky then i'll hold these together make sure i've got a little bit of an angle to it and run the plastic weld down the edge as well. We'll do this around all the different pieces until they're all joined together. There you go, you can see that started to bond already. So I'll now swap this over. I'll put this piece in and we'll do exactly the same on this side and then work our way around to the front. So there we go, that's it all stuck together. Now at this stage, don't worry if it looks messy like this with sort of marks all over it where the plastic weld has sort of seeped out or got in the places that you didn't want it to go. That will all be fixed at a later date. What we want is the shape to look right. So you want these to be slightly angled and you can still sort of move these while the uh, plastic world is setting just sort of uh, pull the things in and out a bit just to make sure it is the right sort of shape and it's also a good idea just to do a test fit onto the uh, condor just to make sure that it does actually fit and looks right so that to me looks like a good starting point so what I'm going to do now is let the, the plastic world sort of fully cure and set so that everything is bonded together and then we can get filing and sanding we'll take away these sort of rough edges and there's a few bits of overhang where the plastic's not quite sort of sapped as perfectly as I would hope Hope, but that's all fixable so let's let this dry for yeah about half an hour and then we'll get filing and sanding and sort of fine tune this shape so that it looks a lot better we'll also make the missing pieces so that this actually clips in but for now I'm very happy with how that's looking <laughs> 
Now that that's had time to set, I can start refining the shape a bit more. As I say, there are a few little bits where it didn't line up quite properly. So on this uh, sort of triangular bit at the front, there's some little bits sticking out on the edges. So we'll just trim those off. And then I'm going to start filing and removing the squareness to it, because obviously we made this out of square pieces, so it looks quite square. So I've got a, a little uh, nail file here. I'm going to just sort of work my way around and soften everything off and round everything off and generally just tidy it up. It will take sort of 15, 20 minutes to get it how I want it but already you can see that that does work quite nicely that fits in quite well once we've got this refined we'll then add the little pieces that hold it onto the front of the condor but uh, yeah first thing let's get this all uh, tidied and neatened up a bit As you can see that's now looking a lot better i've rounded all of the edges and just given it a general sort of tidy up i think that's looking really quite nice it does look a little scratch now but as i said we will be sorting that out at the end what we're really worried about is the shape so that i think is going to be about it for the uh, shape of the windscreen we can just try that on the condor and you can see yeah that re looks really nice it really fits very well so now we've got to actually make the little attachments that mean that this will clip in place as you can see inside the uh, front of the condor there is a sort of little uh, ridge and a little sort of gap underneath so we got to make some bits that will clip underneath those on either side so what I've done is I've cut from the scraps that I uh, told you to keep from uh, when you're cutting this out I've cut two strips these are three millimeters by 16 millimeters and we need to attach those onto this little front section here so we're going to attach them like that so all of the uh, plastic is sticking out to the side once they are fully attached we can then shape them and fine tune them so you want a little bit uh, sticking towards the back like that and everything on the outside so let's plastic weld those in place and then we can tidy those up as well and this will then clip onto the front of the condor Now that those have had time to set we just need to make a couple of minor little modifications to them so that they clip nicely into the front of the condor at the moment you can see it just about fits in what we need to do is uh, sort of taper the ends and round those a little bit so uh, the front pieces you can see here have a slight angle to them so i'm just going to trim those so that they are a little bit more sort of flush with the front there so plastic nippers come in handy for doing that so we just trim those down 
like that. Now these end pieces here we need to sort of slightly round so I'm just going to take off little bits of this just again with the plastic nippers. I'll make a slightly rounded end. It's just so that it catches on the right part of uh, the sort of inside of the condor there. We'll do the same on this one. So again I'm just going to trim off just a little bit. That's probably enough. I'll give that a test fit and hopefully that will slot in place. Yeah, that feels really good. So that's uh, all that it needed. Just a little bit of modification and now that's held in quite nicely. So what we've got to do is get this to look nice and shiny. At the moment you can see it looks a bit sort of sanded where I have sanded it and filed it. So I'm going to take this out to my garage and I'm going to give it a quick spray coat of a clear varnish. You can buy clear varnish in a spray can from most model shops. By any type you like, I've used all sorts over the years. A quick spray with that, maybe a couple of coats, and that will hide all of these scratch marks and blemishes and any sort of little mistakes that we've made while we're making this. And the end result will look really nice and shiny. And here is the windscreen now that we have that gloss top coat on. You can see what a difference it makes. It hides all of those scratches and blemishes and gives you a very nice shiny little uh, windscreen. So let's put this on the bike and you can see how it looks. And there we go. That is a nice replacement windscreen. Obviously it's not uh, perfect, but I think overall it does a really nice job. Finding these windscreens I think is almost impossible, so uh, making something like this is probably a very good option. But you don't just have to do one like this, you could do it in a number of different ways. I have another one here which is done at the sort of the same build but with a slightly different finish, so this has a slightly more sort of uh, satiny finish to it, so you can see that looks quite nice. Then I thought it would be quite a nice idea to try and sort of recreate the look in the cartoon. So um, I built another one here which looks a little bit more cartoony. If you see uh, the Condor in the cartoon. Uh, the windscreen is actually sort of blue with little lines on it to make it look like glass. So um, that's what I have created here. And if we put that on the bike, you can see you get a completely different look to it. It looks uh, much uh, sort of different. I actually quite like that one. It's not uh, going to be uh, for everyone, but I think that's quite a nice sort of little style to it. Then if you want to really go for it, you can actually make a transparent one using exactly the same techniques that I've shown you here. Rather than using a one millimeter black styrene sheet, you can buy one millimeter polycarbonate sheet, which is a clear plastic, and it's a lot harder to do, but you can do it. So here is one that I have uh, sort of made out of that. It's hard to do because you have to be a lot neater when you come to create it. If you make any sort of mistakes, they are really obvious. So this one was made out of uh, clear polycarbonate, and to get it this sort of uh, smoky effect, I've used some Tamiya spray, which is called TS71 Smoke. Uh, it gives a sort of a light dusting, and you're supposed to be able to use it for tinting uh, sort of model car windows and if you put a few coats on you'll end up with something like this and you can see that it is transparent if I put my hand behind the back of it that you can clearly see uh, my hand through it so if you want to go down that route this one I would say is a little bit harder to uh, make just because you have to make everything absolutely perfectly the one I've shown you here you can be a bit rough with it and if it's not quite perfect you can hide that with the sort of sanding and finishing so uh, this one's a little bit easier than uh, making the clear plastic version there but there you go we now have multiple options for windscreens to go on the the condor depending on what look you want if you want a solid black one you could have a clear plastic one or you could even make a little cartoony one like this now we come on to brad turner as you can see here i have two different brad turner figures both have been heavily played with so there's a lot of paint wear on the front most of the panel on this one is missing lots of damage to the belt and the boots and he's also got rubs all on his hair so we need to sort out the paint on these also if you look at the uh, mask that he has the hocus pocus mask you can see that these are also quite worn so well I'm going to do a whole load of uh, repainting of these figures that's not going to be in this video if you want to see me repainting uh, these uh, Brad Turner figure then I will put a link in the description and also a link at the end of this video to uh, the restoration video for me fixing up Brad Turner so by the magic of uh, editing we can make these rather worn figures look rather good just like that and just like that, Brad Turner is back from the paint shop and he is all done. So you can see I now have two really nice looking Brad Turners. All of the wear and tear has been hidden away and they look really good and are ready for display. Compared to other mask vehicles, the Condor seems to be a little bit short changed when it comes to stickers. It actually only has three stickers. We have the little control panel there. And if we raise this section up, you can see we've got a mask logo on that side and the equivalent on the other side. And that's it. And it really feels sort of like there could be a plenty more stickers applied to this to make it look even better. So what I thought is I will design some new stickers to fill in some of these blanks. I think we can certainly add more details on the side. You can see here there's a little pivot that could do with a sticker on. 
on it. I think we can add more in the way of stickers sort of under the cockpit there. I think we could add a little bit more detail there. It also looks like the back of the seat is missing. You can see there's just a sort of green panel. So I think we can extend that. And then actually if we turn this into the helicopter mode, there's plenty of space for extra stickers here. Under the back here where the wheel goes in, I think we could add some sort of jet or something which would look quite nice. There's also a nice little sort of panel here on the back section. I think we can add something onto that. Then where the wheel rotates out, you can see there's a little indent there and it might be quite nice to add something into that, maybe to continue this green along so it sort of looks actually like it's part of the vehicle. And then of course we have the little wing mirrors. There are nice little flat panels there for uh, wing mirrors. So I think maybe we could uh, make something very tiny that can stick onto that. Overall though, there's definitely a lot of space for extra things. So I'm going to get to designing in Photoshop and see what I can come up with to make this condor look even better.
And here we go after an hour or so's work, I've created a whole new sticker sheet for the Condor. I kept the original stickers on there, so we still have the control panel and the two mask logos. But as you can see, I've added a new panel to go above the control panel, sort of under the windscreen. I've got some very tiny ones, which I'm not quite sure you can see there, but these are the wing mirrors. Then we have some things to add onto the pivot points. We've got a seat back. We've got the little green panels that I said to go on uh, the back section here for, uh, with the uh, propeller goes. Then we have this jet section and another little light, which will go underneath so we have a little jet there and a sort of little uh, tr I don't know sort of reversing light or something like that that will uh, go underneath but I think that overall these will add quite a lot to this vehicle so let's get these cut out and applied. that's the stickers all applied. I have to say some of these are very tiny, especially the little wing mirror ones, but they can be done. So here in bike mode, you can see the uh, main difference now is that we have little wing mirrors. We've also got these little sort of pivot points added onto where the uh, helicopter sort of blades rotate up. And I've added an extra panel underneath the uh, windscreen glass there. You can just about see it, there you go. And I think that's quite a nice sort of subtle extra bit of detail, but certainly something they could have done back in the day. We also have the back of the seat. So that actually looks like a proper seat now. Uh, before it was just green there, and it didn't look like it was finished. Then when we turn this into the helicopter mode, we can rotate everything down. And this is when it starts to look really nice, I think, because we've got lots of extra details here. So we can rotate out this wheel. So we've got some little green panels on there. I just think that means that this looks more like a continuous part and that really fits nicely. And if we turn to the back, you can see there's now a jet in the back of it. And I think that sort of works quite well as well. It gives it the idea that this can sort of fly quite fast. And then a sort of some sort of landing light I've put there on the bottom. Overall though, I really like that. I think it's a nice sort of subtle modifications to it. Sometimes adding stickers really does uh, make a toy look better. I think you could probably go too far with these sorts of things. If I'd added more, it just gets, starts to get cluttered. But little subtle ones like that give it that sort of final touch and certainly make this Condor feel a lot more like a sort of finished vehicle. So I'm really very happy with those. If you want to do this to your own Condor, then uh, go to toyploy.com and you'll be able to download uh, the sticker file for that along with the uh, pattern to make the uh, windscreen glass. Now I wanted a way to uh, be able to display the Condor once it was all finished and I found a guy on uh, eBay uh, whose name is Ant but he goes by the name of Mask Accessories Guy Mask and he sells these replacement boxes and they're really very nice. I actually got in touch with him via Instagram. He has an Instagram account where he shows all of the work that he does uh, and that's at Insta Mask. But um, if you want to check out his work, have a look at this. This is the uh, replacement Condor box and I really like this because it's a lovely uh, sort of recreation of the box but he's even bothered to put the original 
original sort of price sticker on there so it makes it feel like it's an old box like you would have got sort of down at Woolworths or something like that. Uh, this is a European box so it comes in multiple languages and it has all the sort of details of the vehicle all around it you can see uh, the pictures on there but the great thing about this is this is not just a box this is actually a sort of uh, repair kit he includes everything you'll need uh, inside the box so, so we have the instruction sheet we have a poster and we also have replacement stickers so if you don't want to do what I've done here and sort of make your own stickers or use my sticker sheet you can get this set and you can see here it comes with a lovely set of uh, replacement stickers so you could just stick those on your bike but as I said it comes with a copy of uh, the instructions so there we go that's the instructions for the Condor and then it also comes with this poster so you can see all the vehicles that you need to get in your collection I really like this sort of thing because it's uh, certainly if, if you've got these things to, and you want to display them it's always nice to display them with a box or some sort of uh, other thing behind them and that's certainly what I'm going to be doing here I'm going to be using this box as a sort of background for uh, displaying my condor and he also does some really nice things which I'd not seen before which he makes little display boxes for the figures now the figures came on cards or you know it, within packages like this but he's made these nice little boxes so if you want to display your figures separately you can get these they're sort of nice little custom things they don't have any character names on them so you just buy uh, the boxes and put whatever figures you want inside them I just think it's a really nice idea and a really nice way of displaying loose figures so I'll put links to uh, both his eBay page and uh, his Instagram in the description for this video and if you want to get them he does uh, boxes for lots of the uh, mask vehicles so if you've got a mask vehicle chances are he has a box for it so go and check those out and so here we go here are my complete condors after rather a lot of work I've got two very displayable bikes the windscreens although not perfect really do a very nice job I'm very happy with how those look and maybe in future I'll be able to find at least one original one but for now I've got these custom ones that do the job very nicely and as you can see with the replacement condor box in the background it's going to be a very nice display here on my shelf at Toy Polloi so if you want to have a go at doing this yourself I've got the uh, pattern for the windscreen is available on toypolloi.com along with my version of these sort of custom stickers if you want to get the box then I will put a link to that as I say in the description for the video I do need to say a massive thank you to Ant who uh, very kindly sent me the box I also need to say a massive thank you to Luke from uh, Reynolds Reviews who helped me out with a missing mask for a Brad Turner figure and don't forget to go and check out the separate uh, Brad Turner restoration video that will be linked at the end of this one if you've enjoyed this video then why not check out some of my other mask videos and make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.